Hello and welcome to another uh, soft space tutorial. This time we'll be going over number two. Let's get into it. All right. So starting with the default work plane, we're going to go ahead and create a rectangular prism. We're going to dimension the bottom line there to 110 millimeters. and then dimension the height to 80 millimeters. We're then going to put in these fillets here that are seen in the, the main guide by clicking the top corners and hitting shift A that creates a tangent arc. Now I missed this when I was making the model when I dimension this, I make a diameter of six millimeters. Um, soft space defaults to diameters and not to radii. So really, it should be a diameter of 12. I also hard coded in that six millimeter diameter and then decided to make them equal uh, just there. Anyway, we go in and we check. There's zero degrees of freedom. Everything looks good. So we'll go ahead and extrude. We're going to extrude at 60 millimeters, so we'll click that edge and press D. Type in 60. Now we're going to create a new work plane on the front face there by clicking a line segment on a point and a line segment perpendicular to the original line segment and then clicking or pressing shift W. We're going to go in and draw a rectangle here. That bottom distance is 30 millimeters. Right there. So click that point and that line, type in 30. Zero degrees of freedom. And we'll go ahead and extrude. Now I'll press tab, select difference. And this goes all the way through, so we need to drag it back. Solve space doesn't do negatives, so you need to make sure that whatever dimension you're uh, trying to type in is in the correct uh, direction vector um, you don't want it you, you know you can't go beyond the model and then type in negative and have it make it solid or vice versa so we typed in 25 there and we're good to go so now we're going to do this top down view here Again, point or a line, a point, and a line, and then shift W. And I, I struggled uh, when I was first making this, not not sure uh, which which way was the best way to to go about this. Normally, I I run these uh, tutorials a couple of times before recording them just so that I can make sure I have the process down but this one I think I just kind of did on the fly so anyway so we go in we make these two lines we make those construction lines by pressing G and then we're going to make the two construction lines equal now, I go to dimension that and it pops up as a reference dimension, which checks out. It shows us we're kind of in the right way, in the right path. So, all right. So, now you could, if you were using a different CAD software, you could have just extruded that rectangle through to remove that pocket. Um, however, with solve space, 
since there is no chamfer tool, um, I decided this is a good time to go in and put in these chamfers that are required. And I, I struggled a bit with this, uh, make the intersection point there. So what that does is it takes a line segment and a point and it splits the line into two segments now. Um, only problem there is it deletes all constraints originally. So you'll see here, I click that button and now I click that segment and press V and press V to put those vertical constraints back on. There we go, closed up that contour. And now we just got the one more line segment to go, or chamfer, rather. And now it's just imagining, so we'll make, oh, that's not right. Sometimes it can get a little tricky to select the right, right line segments. I've since learned uh, that I prefer to, to rotate the camera um, into a three-dimensional space to get those hard to select edges. Um, at this time, I, I didn't, didn't use that method. Okay, so we're going in and, and the way I was taught CAD um, in college, I was always taught that you're supposed to build in as much intelligence into the model as possible. So that's why you see me um, basically constrain everything with constraints before moving into dimensions. You can, of course, hard dimension things if you want. Um, it just makes your model a little less adaptable. All right. Again, dimensioning all these be equal, or constraining them all to be equal, not dimensioning. And then, I don't know where I picked up this dimension. It clearly says three on the face of this print. but I somehow picked up five. So I make it five. Not that it really matters, it still demonstrates the same idea. So go ahead, click that dimension, type in five. We'll go and check this, This uh, specific sketch, it looks good. We'll extrude and rotate into three dimensions. Difference, select this point, that line, and this breaks the model for a redundant constraint. So um, when you're constraining these extrusions, it's good to select a point and then a face. Okay, just kind of taking a look at things. Looks pretty good. The last features here that we need to input into the model are those counterboard bolt holes. So we select that face by again doing a line segment, a point in a line segment. Shift W. I put a couple of circles here. We'll uh, constrain those to be equal and horizontal. Then we can go in and dimension the actual holes. So that dimension of 25. Whoop. The diameter of counterboard depth or diameter of 12 millimeters. And then 30 between them. And then, or I'm sorry, 30 from the edge and then 50 between them. 
Check that. Sorry for the constant shifting between windows. All right, zero degrees of freedom. Now the counterboard depth on this is not through all. So we can dimension that as down five millimeters. Hit enter. And there we go. All right, and then for this work plane, we're gonna select that point and just click sh or press Shift W. Now, there's, so it's already been requested that I make a video on work planes in soft space because they can be a little tricky. Um, so I plan on going over that eventually, but just know that for most work planes, you can either select a line, a point, and a line, or um, if you've just got the center of a circle, you can just get close to the orthogonal uh, plane and then just select a single point. All right, and we can strain that to the face there. And we're basically done. Just make sure I got all the dimensions there. All right, go to the isometric view, hide all. And there you go, there's your Autodesk tutorial number two. Oh, and then I also go to this view here and then fiddle through these settings quite a bit because I hadn't quite learned them yet. Uh, but to find the shadowed line. So I figure it out eventually here. In, in the industry I work in, we never use shadow lines, but there you go. There's shadow lines. And that looks like that view there shows the counterbore. All right. So that's the whole tutorial. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.